Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 93 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about locking user accounts. I strongly suggest to watch parts 90, 91 and 92 before proceeding with the session. In this video, we'll discuss about locking or disabling user accounts after repeated invalid attempts to log in. For example, if a user enters wrong username and password, he will be given another three chances to enter the correct password. After the three chances are elapsed, the account will be locked. After the account is locked, the user will not be able to log in even if he provides the correct username and password. In fact, most of the banking applications does this for security reasons. Let's look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Actually, uh, to support this functionality, we need to change the structure of TBL users table. Now, if you look at this table at the moment, it has got username, password, and email columns only. But then if we want to support the functionality, then we need to have additional columns like retry attempts is locked and locked date and time. So if you look at retry attempts, this is of type integer. So we want to track the number of attempts the user has you know, made to log into the system. And then is locked, whether the account is locked or not. This is a bit data type, which is basically going to store 0 or 1. It will store 1 if the account is locked locked otherwise it will be either zero or null and if the account is locked what is the date and time that the account is locked so we need to store these three pieces of information as well so I need these three columns okay but at the moment the table has these three columns so the best way is to drop this table and recreate it so I'm going to drop this table so refresh that I have TBL users there to drop it select delete click OK so we got rid of that TBL users table. Let me go ahead and recreate this table using the script here. So command completed successfully. Refresh the table. So we have the table there. Select star from TBL users. OK, so we got the new columns. Now, since we have changed the structure of the table, registration page will break. So if I try to register an, an, a new user, for example, test, let me fill in all the required details. And then when I click the register button, I get a runtime error. Look at that. Column name or number of supplied values does not match table definition. So what that means is the TBL user table has got so many columns now, but the number of values that you have supplied does not match you know, with the number of columns that we have. That's the error that we see here. So to correct this, you know, this page actually calls SP register user store procedure. OK, so let's correct that stored procedure. And to get the definition of the stored procedure, the easiest way is to use the uh, system stored procedure, sp underscore help text, drag and drop the name of the stored procedure, get rid of that dbo dot, select everything, press F5. That should give you the text of the stored procedure. So let's paste it here. And the line that causes the problem is this line. So this table now, TBL users, has got more than three columns. OK, so but if you look at this table, this retry attempts is locked and locked date and time. All these are nullable columns. OK, so it's OK if you don't supply values for them when you insert a new row. At that point, the value will be null. OK, but then if you're only, you know, inserting values for specific number of columns, then in your insert statement, you need to specify the column list. So let's go ahead and specify the column list. So these values that we are passing in here are the values for username column, password column, and email column. So let's alter this stored procedure. OK, so that should fix, fix the registration page. So let me enter the details again and click register. So I am able to register now. Let's go back, uh, close this window, and select the records from TBL users table. So I have this record here. But look at retry items is locked and locked date and time. Those are null because we haven't supplied the values for them when we are registering the user. And it doesn't make sense to supply values at the time of registration. OK, cool. So to support our functionality, the next thing that we have to do is uh, we have to write a stored procedure which will authenticate user if they supply the correct username and password. But then if they enter an invalid username or wrong password, then we need to increment retry at attempts. If he enters the wrong password for more than three times, we want to lock the account um, along with the date and time that the account is locked. So we need to write a stored procedure to do that. Now. 
I already have a stored procedure to do that and if you look at that it's a little lengthy stored procedure but it's not really difficult to understand that if you have followed the SQL Server video series that we have discussed we have discussed about how to use you know how to basically write stored procedures um, and, and things like that so please refer to SQL Server video tutorial if you're new to stored procedures okay so here uh, Already, we have authenticate user stored procedure that we have created in the previous session of this video series. Now we need to change that because we want some additional functionality now. Okay, so obviously authenticate user. If we want to authenticate user, we need to pass it two pieces of information: the username and password, which are uh, which are being passed in as input parameters to the stored procedure. And then within the body of the stored procedure, there's quite a bit of code, but it's very easy to understand. So here we have three local variables that we have declared within the stored procedure to keep track of some of the things that we are going to calculate. Okay, so this account locked variable, look at that. The first thing that I have to do whenever somebody passes a username and password to the stored procedure, if the account is already locked, we will not even bother, you know, compare, you know, checking if there is a match for that username and password. Because if the account is locked, the account is locked. He cannot do anything. The only thing that he can do is get his account unlocked. How to get the account unlocked, we'll discuss about that in the next video session. So the first thing I'm checking here is, into this variable, I am getting the value of is locked for the given username. Okay, so if the account is locked, if the value is one, that's a bit data type. So if the account is locked, then that will be equal to one. If that's the case, I am selecting one as, look at that, every time we return something that goes to the .NET application or the caller in this format. Is the account locked? Is the user authenticated? How many retry attempts uh, has he elapsed? Okay, so these three columns will be sent back to the application and then the application will compute what to do depending on the values of these columns. Okay, so if it comes inside this, if the account is locked, we will give that output. That's it, the stored procedure ends there. Okay. On the other hand, if the account is not locked, that's when it comes to this else block. Okay, so if the account is not locked, then we need to take that username and password and see if there is a match. And how are we doing that? We are getting the count of the username from TBL users, you know, where username is equal to whatever username we are passing in and whatever password we are passing in. We are comparing that with the username and password list that we have in TBL users. Okay, if there is a match, this variable will be one. So if that variable is one, we know that a match is found. So if we have found the match, then what we need to do, let's say, you know, look at the update statement here. We are resetting the retry attempts to zero. Now let's say I entered the wrong password the first time, but next time, the second time, if I enter the correct password, then I reset that retry attempts to zero. Okay, and then Next, what we do, so I entered a correct username and password. Now I, I return this output back to the user. The account is not locked. The user is authenticated. Retry attempts obviously is zero. Okay, but on the other hand, look at that. If the match is not found, then what we have to do, here a bit of work that we have to do. Okay, we need to get the retry count. Okay, so here we are using is null function. Again, why do we use is null function? We have discussed about this in the SQL Server video series. Is null function, if that column value is null, then it returns a zero. Okay, so, so we are getting the value of retry attempts. Okay, and then we are incrementing that by one. Why? Because the user has entered an invalid username and password. So if the user is entering the invalid username and password for the first time, look at that first time retry attempts will be null in the table right so it will be null in the table if it is null and if the user has entered the i mean if the user has entered invalid or wrong password for the first time then it will return zero this is null function will return zero and to zero we are adding one okay and then if the retry count is less than or equal to three then what we are doing we are updating this user table with that value in retry count okay and then what we are doing we are returning this message back to the user so if it is the first time he is he entered the wrong password retry count will be one if it's the second time look 
it will be 2. But look at the account locked at 0. The account is not locked yet. The user is not authenticated yet. It's 0. But the retry count will be 1, 2, or 3, depending on you know which of the attempts you are making use of. OK? On the other hand, look at that. Here, the match is not found. OK? And then, if the retry count is, is less than or equal to 3, we keep on updating the table. And then, we return the retry count limit to the caller. OK? But on the other hand, if the retry count is greater than 3, then what we want to do, we want to lock the account immediately. So we are setting is locked is equal to 1 on that TBL user table. And not only that, we are also updating the retry attempts. And we are also updating the locked date and time variable to the current date and time. We are using get dates equal server function to do that. And finally, what we are doing, we are selecting 1 as account locked. And retry attempts doesn't really make any sense because we are just locking the account. So we don't, uh, I mean, we don't really want to make use of retry attempts uh, in the .NET application. So it's a pretty simple stored procedure. It's just the logic that makes it a little complex. Uh, I'll have this stored procedure, you know, pasted on my blog, and I'll have the link to my blog in the description of this video if you want to refer to that a little while later. Okay, so that's the stored procedure that we want to, you know, change. The SP Authenticate user stored procedure should be changed to this. So let me go ahead and alter that. So press F5. So that stored procedure should have been updated. Now what what is left out? We need to invoke the stored procedure within the .NET application. So within the .NET application, if you have been following along this video series, in the login button, uh, click. We are invoking this authenticate user method. So this function now needs to support, you know, needs to invoke that stored procedure. And then depending on what the stored procedure is returning back, we need to display the appropriate error message to the end user. Okay. So again, I have, you know, typed this method just to save some time. Again, most of it here is going to be the ADO.NET code. Now, the first thing to notice here is, I have changed the return type of this method from boolean to void. So now this method is going to do everything, redirecting from the uh, redirecting the user from the login page and displaying appropriate error messages. So obviously the first line here is reading the connection string from web.config file, creating the SQL connection object, creating the SQL command, specifying the command type is stored procedure. Obviously we want to encrypt and then send the password to the database for comparison and we are using SHA1, that's the hashing algorithm. And then we are creating the two SQL parameter objects, adding the parameters to the command object, open the connection, executing the reader. Okay, now why are we using execute reader here? Because we are going to get a row of data. It's not a scalar value, it's going to be a row of data. So I'm using execute scalar. And obviously while rdr.read. Now all this is basic, simple, straightforward ADO.NET code. If you haven't watched the video series on ADO.NET, I would strongly encourage you to do so before you know continuing with the session. All right, so we are looping through the reader object and look at that. I'm getting the retry attempts from the reader object. Okay, so if you look at what we are getting back, we are getting three columns uh, back and those three columns appear like this account locked, authenticated, retry attempts. Those are the column names. So what are we doing here? Retry attempts, we are converting that to integer. And then look at this. If the first thing that we need to check is if the account is locked, there's nothing we can do. We just display that message in the label control. So label message dot text is equal to account locked, please contact administrator. Okay. On the other hand, if that's not the case, if the account is not locked, if it is not true, then we are coming to retry attempts, okay? And we are already retrieving retry attempts. If retry attempts is greater than zero, then what we are doing, let's say we want to allow four chances, including the first time. So from four, we are subtracting the retry attempts, okay? So that will give us the attempts left. And in the message, we are displaying, a, in the label, we are displaying a message, invalid username and a password. And to that, we are concatenating attempts left. You know, if it's one, it'll be one. If it's two, it will be two. And then we are, you know, this string is being appended to that number there and displaying that in the label control. 
Okay. On the other hand, if if retry attempts count is zero, that means there is no impact on retry attempts. So we come and check whether if the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, you know, if that value is true, then we are redirecting the user from the login page. Okay. And this is again um, the same as we have done in the previous session. Finally, if that's not true, then we are just displaying this message, invalid username and password. Okay, actually that covers this. You know, this is just, just in case if nothing matches up, you know, just as a safe blocker. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this with this change. But before that, we need to change the call in the login button click. So within the login button click, uh, now it's not an if condition. I don't even have to have this. I can just call this method there. That's it. Actually, in this, um, okay, we need to pass the values. Where are the username and password coming from? Those are coming from the respective text boxes. So, txt password. Okay, so that should solve that. Actually, in this authenticate user method, we don't really require the cells block because we are already comparing, uh, you know, if retry attempts is greater than zero, we're actually specifying that message here, invalid and username password. So I can get rid of this else block here. And now let's go ahead and run this. So we already have a test user with, um, you know, test as the password. Let's try and enter test as the username. And I'm entering an invalid password intentionally. I click login, look at that. Invalid username and password, three attempts left. Let's look at the database table. That should have been updated as well. So select star from TBL users. So now retry attempts, look at that. I, I elapsed one of my attempt, okay? Let me try that again, an invalid password. I click login, look at that, two attempts left, and now I select that. So retry attempts, I have used two of the attempts to log in, and look at is locked and locked date and time, they are still now. Now let's say I enter the correct username and password. I click login, so I am redirected to the login page. So after two attempts, if I enter the correct username and password, the retry attempts should come back to zero. So let me execute that. So retry attempts to zero is locked and locked it and time are the same. So let's go back and try, you know, maybe three times. So test, I entered the correct password. Let me enter the wrong password. Click and login. Look at that, three attempts left. Enter another wrong password, another wrong password, another wrong password. Look at that, account locked please contact administrator. So now I come here, select star from TBL user. I used my four attempts. The account is locked. That's the date and time the account is locked. In the next video session, we'll discuss about what are the options that are available to unlock the locked user account. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.